Well, greetings, friends. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule just to learn a little bit more about Jesus. I'm Eric L. Carney, pastor of the Emmanuel Apostolic Church, and I'm going to continue from the series, yes, continue from the series, The Heart of Joshua. So grab your Bibles and turn with us to Joshua chapter 3. Be blessed. If I can direct your attention to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, and I will read it in your hearing. Verse 1 states, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went throughout the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and what? Go after, Go after it. Verse 4 says, Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits, that's about a half a mile by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. In other words, you've never gone this way before. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 8 says, and thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Verse number 13. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that hear the, the Ark, that bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Thank you, Lord. That the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall, they shall stand on a on an heap. Verse 14 says, and when it came to pass, when the people removed their tents to pass over Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of the harvest. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up and heap very far from the city of Adam, that is, beside Zaratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed, and they and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Verse 17 reads, And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm, on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground unto all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Praise the Lord. If I can direct your attention to verse 3 of the third chapter of Joshua. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. I'm going to talk to you today about going after the presence of God. Going after the presence of God. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be able to be here on this Sunday morning to be able to speak to your people. God, I do not count it as, as, as just something, just, just frivolous, just something as, as just something to do. But God, I count it as a pleasure. I count it as a great, joyous occasion to be able to listen to you as I speak unto your people. I'm asking you, Father, to bless their ears, open them up, that they will hear the words that you have to say. Let it fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and just say, let's go after his presence. Turn to someone else and say, let's go after his presence. Now, there are so many ways I could have gone with this, with this message. Um, I, I had so many titles that were coming in here and there because the significance of this, one of the great mighty things of this is that, that we all know they walked on dry water. So it could have been, let's cross over and, on, on dry ground. Let's watch God work and do the, but God said, he directed my attention to this third verse. Because none of this would have never happened had they not had obeyed the third verse. A lot of us want great many things of God, but we do not want to get up from our comfort zone and go after the presence of God. 2015 was and is a time in our lives that has led us to a type of Jordan River. Praise God. We all realize that um, we thank the Lord 2015 is coming to an end. Some of us, some of us were, were released of things that have led you to here. It could have been a relationship with someone. It could have been a friend. It could have been a boyfriend. It could have been um, a, a marriage. It could have been well, whatever it is. You could have gone through some type of turmoil, some type of struggle that led you somehow to this place. This place out on Route 13 but people would have never thought there would be a church located where we are. But somehow in the year of 2015, God led you right here. Some of us were birthed here. Some of us are, are getting ready to birth out something here. Some of us are getting ready to, because God has placed something inside of you. He's called you to do something, and he's brought you here to this place. I thank the Lord evangelist um, Nelson preached a few months ago about the birthing room. We are in the birthing room. Yes. Now, you can take that however you may want to. You can take that if God is getting ready to birth out a ministry out of you. God is getting ready to birth out, you know, the, the, the sickness that you may have ailing your body. God is getting ready to birth out, you know, family, domestic issues that you've been harboring for so long. These things are getting ready to come out. God has led you here to this place on this particular day for a reason. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Nothing happens happenstance. You just so happen to go through here. You just so happen to, to look up on the Internet and, and say, where's the nearest church? And happens to direct you here. It just so happens that you find an old Facebook friend uh, from years ago that you haven't heard from in years, and you decided to show up someday. Right. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen that, that somehow or another you, you met somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody, and they brought you here. Right. These things just don't happen by happenstance. God is a God of order. He's strategically planning things in your life. That brings you from one level to the next level. You know, once you get here, he'll say, now turn right. Now go here. When the children of Israel were led by Moses, he told them, now it's time to turn. Little did they know that they were turning towards the promised land, but because of their heart, because of their mind frame, they could not let go of Egypt. They, Egypt, remember this, Egypt always will represent bondage, will always represent sin. It's the land that God is trying to get you out of. Yes, they were in there for so long. That's all they ever known. They were born in it, a lot of them. Some of us were born into sin. All we know is drugs around our household. All we know is seeing mama shooting up crack in the morning. All we know is seeing and hearing violence all throughout the streets. 
Some of us, that's the only thing we've ever seen. That's the life you've had. But God has sent a deliverer to bring you out of there. Hallelujah. God, God didn't have them staying in Egypt. Yes, it was a very long time. A very long time. But God brought them out. And he led them to this point right now where they are at the very banks of the river. The Bible says they lodged there. Sometimes God will bring us to a place where we see where we want to go. And it, it could just seem so it, right in front of us. But there's something, something preventing us from crossing over. See, all this other time, they were just walking and walking and walking. Now they see where they want to go, but they've got to cross over something. It's right there. And the Bible says that, that they lodge on the banks. So many times, we as God's people, we can be just at the cusp, at the very brinks, brink of, of, of crossing over. And we will just, it's so close, but maybe it's just not for me. And so we'll just lodge here. We will be so close to it, but, and we will just make ourselves comfortable. And we'll just start unpacking and saying, well, maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's for so-and-so. Well, thank you. And we'll be satisfied. Thank you, Lord. I can see it. Thank you, Jesus. It's wonderful. It's nice. It's beautiful. It's great. It's wonderful. And we will just make ourselves satisfied with that. But God is saying, I have not brought you through all of the stuff you went through to bring you to the brink of it, to look at it. You went through too much stuff for you to stop here and hold your ministry inside of you. Your testimony. Now, I'm not saying everybody's, and when I say ministry, does that mean preacher? No. It could be your testimony to someone else. Don't you know that the Bible says we overcame the devil by the word of your testimony? Somebody is waiting to hear what you've gone through. Somebody is waiting to hear that. They need to hear that. And so, so God forbid we just stay right here and just lodge and, and just take up a place, pick up, pitch our tents and just start living. And God is saying, I want you there because, you know, yes, we can testify here on the lodge, but we haven't made it there. So that's just like a bunch of people. Uh, let's just say a bunch of poverty people in poverty talking about greatness, talking about, you know, um, g getting a home, talking about having a car. And, yeah, we can talk about it, but you know what? That's nice. For Thank you for encouraging me. But truth be told, you're just like me. So talk to me. Show me how you made it over. That's where God is trying to get us. We're trying to tell somebody what, how great saved life is and how wonderful it is to praise Jesus. And, yeah, and that's, that's great. That's wonderful. But if you are not living the life, if you're talking about how great is our God on Sunday morning and then on Monday, Tuesday, you're cussing everybody out because somebody stepped on your, on your favorite Nikes? Come on now. You are just like them. God is saying, I'm trying to get you out of this same old rut you've been in for years and years, bring you over into the land of promise so, that I, so you can be an effective witness. You want to know why your folks aren't saved, your family members and your loved ones? Because you ask yourself, how effective of a witness am I? Amen. Come on, come on. How effective am I? Am I telling them we're going to the promised land, we're going to the promised land, but I'm just sitting here? And yet how great it is over there? No. Cross over the Jordan so you can get there and tell someone else to come out. Show them the way. God did not save us just to save ourselves. We have a mission. It's time to stop putting away the same old, same old stuff you've been playing with and tempt, been tempted with all your life. Other people are waiting to hear your testimony. Well, that's right. People are waiting to hear your testimony. You know, a lot of times people will think, I'm not a minister, I'm not a preacher, so how can I be effective? Let me bring them to the preacher so they can hear what the preacher has to say. Yes, that is totally fine. We're supposed to bring ourselves to the house of the Lord. However, you have a testimony. 
Don't allow anyone to make you feel that your testimony, what you have gone through, is not significant. You are going through that situation because God has a plan for you to share it with someone else. So remember that you are going through it for a reason because you have a ministry inside of you. The Bible says we overcame the enemy by the words of our testimony. Somebody is waiting to hear your testimony. Well, that's all the time I have in this podcast. Click on part two to hear more. And if you are looking for prayer and you need someone to help you build your faith, reach out to us on our website at IACDelaware.com. Until then, be blessed.